Amen. Good morning, people of God. Thank you for joining Discipleship Ministries on this beautiful morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Just look at somebody near you and tell them we shall rejoice. Amen. 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 I greet you in the, in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ on this morning. Just want to thank everyone for tuning in, for signing on, for logging on with Discipleship Ministries. Amen. I just want to want to say that I honor God on this morning. Just ain't no God like the one I got. Just tell somebody in the house with you, somebody in the car with you. If you got to talk to yourself this morning, just give him some glory. Give him some praise. Ain't no God like the one I got. Amen. Amen. Thank you, people of God. I honor God on this day, for it is truly about him and not about me. Amen. I honor you, the people of God, on this morning. Good morning, Discipleship Ministries. To, to all of you that have logged on, signed in, tuned in on this morning to worship service, I greet you. Amen. And to the jewel that sits by my side, good morning, First Lady Mama Rogers. Amen. Amen. Now that I've gotten all of that out of the way, uh, people of God, let's get ready to go into the word this morning. Is that all right with you? Amen. Let's get ready to go. John chapter four. John chapter four. Turn with me to the gospel of John. And I always say this. If you have your Bible, use your table of content. If you have a, 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 a I guess you call it a book Bible now and not a electronic, a book Bible. Um, Use your table of contents to find it. John chapter 4. We're going to start reading at verse tw verses 23 and 24. John chapter 4, verses 23 and 24. Let me say this before we get started. If you have the DMI Church app, make sure you go in tomorrow. Uh, they always post my ministry notes on Mondays. So go in on Monday, look over the notes, list, look, listen to the message again, and follow the notes. Because a lot of times when, when I'm speaking under the unction of the Holy Ghost, I may say something uh, through him that I don't have in my notes or he may be taking me so fast and I'm trying to keep up with him and I miss things in my notes and a lot of times as I'm making notes God is speaking to me and I'm putting them in into my notes for the message so go into the DMI church app tomorrow uh, go over the notes you can watch the the service again Amen. If you don't have the DMI Church app, make sure you do it. Text to the number 77977. Text uh, DMI Church app. Did I say that right? I <laughs> DMINC Church, DMINC app. There you go. Pastor's going to get it right in a minute. Amen. See, I, I got a bunch of these young technological people, so they keep me, keep me abreast of everything. But let's go into the word. John chapter 4, verses 23 and 24. Signify that you have it by saying amen. I hear you in the spirit. Amen. But the hour cometh and now is when the true worshiper shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. My God. Father God, we thank you for your word on today. Have your way. Speak how you want to speak. Move how you want to move. Do what you want to do. We are submitted and surrendered. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I, 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 I'm somewhat of, uh, I don't want to use the word confused, I'll say perplexed, because a part of me wants to give you this message the way God gave it to me, and a part of me wants to pull up a chair and sit down and talk to you on this morning. Um, what are you talking about, Pastor Rogers? I'm, I'm, I'm at a place Right now, I'm, I'm watching everything that's taking place. I'm, I'm watching what's going on in this world, and, and it's beginning to alarm me. If I can say it like this, you know, Spider-Man says my, my, my spidey senses are tingling. Uh, my, my spiritual senses are tingling, and, and, and it's alarming 
it's starting to alarm me. Here we are, we, we, we have all these things going on. We have the COVID-19 going on and, 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 and we've been talking about a second wave of it, but we better get ready for a second wave of what else is about to come along with COVID-19. We, 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 we got so much uh, racial injustice going on uh, until the people are beginning to protest. And, and as the people are protesting against the police officers, police officers are walking off on their job or they're not responding to calls like they normally would. It's so much chaos going on. We got our, our, our government in turmoil. It's just so much going on. But there's something going on in the land that is alarming me. And, and I want to share it with you. God gave me this, this scripture, and, and I've preached this a couple times before, but he, he dropped this in my spirit about a week ago. And, and I just haven't been able to shake this scripture. So I, I want to share, and I, I want to title this message, The Real You. The Real You. Uh, uh, how, how many of you know that the real you is about to show up? I want y'all to catch where I'm going. The, the real you is about to show up. What are you talking about, Pastor Rogers? The text says, but the hour cometh and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. Understand something. Church has changed. Church has totally changed and may never be the same. Well, you can't say that, Pastor Rogers. I want you to look at it. Since COVID-19 has hit America, you have pastors that are running full speed trying to keep up with what's going on. We are doing tent revivals. We're having parking lot church. We're doing drive-through communions, drive-through prayers. We're doing uh, social media. We're preaching on social media platforms. We're, we're, we're having conference calls on Zoom. We are working harder now than we ever worked. Why? Because not I want y'all to hear me, people of God, and I want you to hear me not just in the natural, but I want you to hear me in the spirit. As a pastor, we are running full speed, trying to become as creative as we can so none of the sheep wander off and get eaten by the wolves. It's not for me. I got my soul salvation in check. I may wait sway a little bit, but I'm planted like a tree beside rivers of living waters. I got 20 some years in on this, but what about the babes in Christ that's only been saved for about two or three years and they haven't planted themselves and, and they still dealing with issues and, and, and struggling with identities. What, what about them? See, that's why pastors are working so hard to, to reach the people. We're not trying to use social media to, to, to grow our mega ministries over the internet. We trying to Hold on to the sheep so they don't get slaughtered in the wilderness. Catch that. Because watch this. We've been, discipleship ministries, we've been away from church for four months. Four months. That's 100, how many days? Four times 30? 120. I wanted to make sure my math was right. That's 120 days. And I guarantee you, for most of us, the real you is starting to show up. What are you talking about, Pastor? Hang tight with me. We're going to get there. The real you is, is, is starting to show up. Now, now watch this. God, churches change, may never be the, be the same, but God does not change. And, and I honor God. People of God, please hear me. I honor God that he is not as fickle as man. God is as solid as, as they come. See, man will sway back and forth. You don't, you don't believe me? Does any of you have any friends that used to be your friend that was real good with and all of a sudden something happened, you said something, did something, whatever the situation may be, and now they're not your friend. And you may go years without talking to that person and all of a sudden y'all get real acquainted again. Now y'all y'all best buddies, BFs, oh that's my BFF all over again. Because people are fickle but God does not change. Same God yesterday, today, and forevermore. Can I take it a step further? God takes a word, his word, that was, that was written some 2,000 years ago, and it still applies to today. That's how bad God is. Oh, my God. He can take a 2,000-year-old verse and apply it to your 2020 situation. That's the God I serve. Well, anyway, the same God today, yesterday, and forevermore. But the text goes on to say something. 
And I'm coming back to the real you. And the text goes on and says, but the hour cometh and now is. People of God, I believe that we are, we are living this. We are literally living this. Stay with me. It says, and now is when the true worshiper shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. The true worshipers, who are they? Where are they? How can you tell who they are? Who are the true worshipers? Who? Four months. And you haven't been able to come into a congregational fellowship. Four months. 120 days. That's Sister Stephanie said. 120 days. Nobody's standing up before you telling you to open up your book to this text. 120 days. Nobody making you get up to come to worship service. Four months. Now, if you're not a true worshiper, guess what has just taken place? You have gotten spiritually, spiritually lazy. Yeah, I said that in slow-mo. Because now you're at home. Nobody's prompting you or priming you to read your Bible. Nobody's pushing you to pray. Nobody, do you get what I'm saying? That? So now the real you is coming forth. Four months in, the real you is. Because here's the thing, Joanna Stephanie. If you're a true worshiper, over the four months, you've you still been worshiping. If you're a real prayer warrior, you haven't stopped praying because the churches have been closed. Do you get what I'm saying? People got now the real you is standing up. Oh, my God. Watch this. Some of you, God had delivered from cussing. You just started back cussing. Why? Cuss through. Some of you have stopped drinking. Now you started drinking again. Why? Jesus. Do you get what I'm saying this morning? There's a you that you had buried. Because you were coming into the house of God and you were fellowshipping and iron was sharpening iron and you were getting word weekly. But now you're out there on your own. And if you don't sign in, if you don't log in, if you don't tune in, guess what? You're out in the wilderness by yourself and you're going to starve to death. Jesus, just follow with me. Just follow with me. Who are they? Where are they? How can you tell who they are? But let, let me tell you a secret. Don't get caught up in their relationship. Worry about your own. See, 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 right now, four months in w w without being able to come together. If you are not strong enough, you, you're beginning to feel weak in your spirit. My God, my God. And understand the enemy. He's like a seeking. He's like a roaring lion seeking who he may devour. And he's looking for that weak sheep. He's looking for that weak lamb. He's looking for the weak one that he can pounce upon and attack. And if he sees you weak and you wounded and your feelings are hurt, are you in your feelings and you're on the outskirts? Guess what? You're the one that he's going to attack. He's going to send everything your way every temptation that he know you like he's going to send it your way see you didn't realize how valuable you really are but this is why the attack is coming because he's after the real you my god my god my god okay let, let, let me take you let, let me take you somewhere real quick go with me to matthew chapter 13 Verses 29 and 30. I just want to take you somewhere. Because I, I, I believe that God is making a move that we as the people in this land didn't see him making. I believe that God is doing something in this day and time that we did not expect. We didn't see it coming down the pipeline. Matthew 13, 29 and 30 says this. But he said, nay. Lest while ye gather up the tares, ye root up also the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. And in the time of the harvest, I will say to the reapers, gather ye together first the tares and bind them in bundles to burn them. But gather the wheat into my barn. Let, let me. People of God, I believe that we're living in the now is time. And it's a time for true relationship. It's time for truth to come forth. And, and, and God has, has allowed COVID-19 to hit America and, 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 and he's allowing something to be purged, something to be refined in the heart of the true worshiper. Now, now, now you're not, what he's doing is not going to be developed. It's not going to be manifested in everybody. 
because this is, this is the perfect time. We're ripe for the manifestation of God within us. Did y'all catch that? We're ripe for the manifestation of God in us. And, 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 and here he is. He's allowed the doors of the church to be closed down. And, 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 and we're living in the now is where and the only way you're going to get your word is you press forward to get it. You got to tune in. You got to log on. You, we, we, we're living in the now is where you're going to have to desire the word like never before. Because if not, it's just going to fall nigh your feet. And nobody's there to tell you, come on, baby. Come on to the discipleship class. You need to be in Bible study. No, 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 no. True worshipers, the real you is about to show up. Oh my God, my God. But look at this. Look at this. He, 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 he has orchestrated, he has allowed for the church to be closed up. I believe that God allowed the wheat and the tarot to grow together, not just in the world. See, a lot of times when we use that scripture, we, we talk about us as the church growing with the world, but I believe that he allowed the wheat and the tarot to grow inside the church. Why do you say that, Pastor Rogers? Because he said, I'm going to, let me take you to the scripture so you don't think I'm lying. 1 Peter 4, 17. For the time is come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first begin at us, what shall the end be to be of them that obey not the gospel of God? Did you catch that? God is saying, I'm going to start my judgment in my house. There's going to be some that are kept and then there's some that are going to be pushed away. Now, what did the man say about the wheat and the tare? He said, let the wheat and the tare grow together. He said, but I'll say to those that come to reap it, I'll tell them, go ahead and pluck up the tare first. And bundle it up so it can be burned. What are you saying, Pastor God? What are you saying, Pastor Rogers? What I'm saying is God is speaking a bold statement to the church of Jesus Christ right now. And I believe that what he's saying is he's allowed the wheat and the tare. He's allowed the believer and the non-believer to fellowship together in his house. But now it's time for the true worshipers. If you don't have your relationship intact with God, now is the time to get it. Right now when your flesh is, ra is rising up and starting to say things it shouldn't say. Right now when you're desiring things that you haven't desired in a long time. Oh yeah, the real you is coming out. But you have to, oh Jesus, just stay with me. Just stay with me for a moment. Amen. But, but, but it said, well, look at the text. Look at the text. It said, when the true worshiper shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. Here is the true essence of our relationship with God. Worship and truth. He said, for God is a spirit. And those that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. In spirit and in truth. See, you got to understand, you're not impressing God with your bundles. You're not impressing God with, with your box braids or, or, or whatever. You don't impress him with your MAC makeup. Your Louis Vuitton is nice. Your red bottoms are fine, but you're not impressing God. You can get buck naked, as Bernie Mac used to say. You can get buck naked and go before God because he's not looking at your nasty flesh anyway. He's looking at what he's put inside of you. He's looking at your spirit, man, the part of you that looks, oh, my God, that looks like him. Jesus. But, but, but that's the true essence. He wants us just the way we are. Stop trying to get yourself together. I hear so many people say, oh, I'm going go to I'm, I'm gonna go do this when I get myself together. The Lord know my heart. When I get myself together, I'm, I'm going to start serving him. You may never make it if you're waiting on you because if you could have done it, you would have did it years ago. You didn't know what to do with the real you. Now turn it over to God. My God. Here we are. World changing in a place that we've never seen it. And we're getting caught up in, 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 in the wrong things. We're allowing all the distractions of the world, all the distractions of, uh, 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 of what's going on to take our focus off. Number one, God. And number two, our enemy. Keep your eyes on him. Be truthful with God. He already knows. Jesus, Jesus. If you're going to worship him in spirit, you can't come to God fake. 
you don't think he sees the real you? He sees you with your lying, cheating, adulterating, fornicating, stealing grapes out of Walmart self. He sees the real you. And here's the thing about God. He loves you beyond where you are. Oh, my God. He loves you beyond where you are. He sees the real you. And he accepts you with your nasty, gossiping attitude. <laughs> oh, my God. That's love. Just look at somebody and say, that's love. Because he loves me beyond who I am. Jesus. He says, shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. Get to know him. Study his word. Talk to him. Listen for his voice. If you want to worship him in spirit and in truth, here I am, God. I'm a broken vessel. I got a bad attitude. I'll cuss, I'll drink, I'll shoot if they, don't, if they don't watch me. Be honest with God. Here I am, not trying to cover up nothing, Father. I'm damaged. I'm broken. I don't always make the right decisions, God. Lord, right now I'm struggling with who I am. I'm struggling with who I'm supposed to be. I don't know who the real me is, God. I just I go to church when people around me say go to church. I go to the club when people say go to the club. I, I, I don't know, God. I don't, I don't know. Spirit and in truth. And you have to be willing to surrender, my God. You have to be willing to submit and surrender yourself to God. If you're going to worship him in spirit and truth, if you're going to be real, we're not talking about church dress up, big hat, shiny suits, who got the best gator, gators on church. We're talking true worship. See, it don't matter right now. I, I told y'all some months ago, it doesn't matter if you got 10,000 members or 10. We all on the same platform right now. It don't matter how many red pads or red bottoms you got in the closet. Ain't nobody can see them right now. Most people watching, watching this worship service from the comfort of their own couch or their own bed. Do you get what I'm saying this morning? The real you. Jesus, Jesus. Just follow with me. Follow with me. It says the Father seeketh such to worship him. He's been waiting on you. He's been waiting on you. You got to understand, worship isn't complete until God hears your voice. <laughs> That's the thing about it. You can be in a room with a whole bunch of the, it, give me the best praise, work, pra, praise, pra, can I say that right? Give me the best praisers and give me the, the, the best praise and worship team and, and, and worship ain't complete until he hears your voice. Why? Because he's been waiting. He's been waiting to hear a, a, a melody that, that comes off your lips that only you can move him. My God. My God, Jesus. He's been waiting on you. See, worship isn't complete for God until he hears you. He wanted your attention. Now he's got it. The real you, Jesus. The, the second part of that text says, let me see, let me go back to my notes. second part of that text says, God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. They, he reiterates that this is not about fanfare. This is not about church business as usual. This is about kingdom, relationship. And God wants the real you. You, you, you can't hide behind the praise team no more. You can't hide behind the scripture. The welcome. You can't hide behind the person in front of you when, when they lift their hands and you just kind of bend down and, and, and fade out behind them. You, you can't do that. See, 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 now all eyes are on you, so to speak. See, God ain't got to peep around sister such and such big hat to see you now. It's just you and him. So if you're worshiping in spirit and truth, he sees you. But if you're not, he sees you too. I said all of that to say this. I believe that God has allowed for the doors of the church to be closed. 
I believe that God is filtering out some people from the church. And I, and I, and, and, and I, know, I know before you even say it, well, it is not his will that any should perish. He said, let the wheat and the tare grow together. He said, let it grow together. Because if I try to pluck it too early, it's gonna, when I pull the roots of the tare, it's going to pull up the roots, of the, the roots of the wheat. So let it grow together. Let the tare get just as strong, just as grounded, just as rooted as the wheat. And we'll pull out the tare. See, right now is only the true worshipers that are staying connected. Right now is only the true worshipers that are in their prayer closet. See, you, you may have been a part uh, of the intercessory prayer team at your church. Are you doing intercessory prayer? Or has the real you come out? Jesus, Jesus. Are you, have you gotten what I'm talking about yet? Because right about now, going, going four months without being able to make it into the house of God, you better make sure you got God in your house. Because if not, the real you is about to tear it up. My God, my God. Let me give you my conclusion. The doors of most churches are still closed. We're becoming relaxed with not going to church. Some people are cringing at the very thought of that. When will we return to being able to go to the house of God? That seems to be the popular question. Don't worry about returning to church. You are the church of Jesus Christ. It's not about a building. It's about a relationship. Stop worrying about the building of God and get concerned about the church of God. Your relationship is far more important to God. Did you catch that? You are the church of Jesus Christ. Get this in order. God's already got this lined up. He's already... Do you notice something? We're not even in this building, and this building is still going forward. This building is still progressing. What about you? Has the real you showed up and canceled everything? Or are you still worshiping in truth? People of God, I have become alarmed because I'm watching people become so relaxed in their relationship with God and it's coming soon that they're not going to have that relationship. I believe that some of the very elect are going to become so comfortable with not going to church, with not reading their Bibles, without, without, without talking to God, no communion, no relationship. And I believe that the enemy is setting us up. He's setting us up so that we can become weak. And we can't discern him. And we can't see him from the high wall coming. And he's going to launch an attack upon the body of Christ like never before. I'm afraid to say that there's coming a day when the word of God is going to become slack in this land, America. The very land that we scream, God bless America. People of God, if you've never prayed, now is the time to pray. If you've never interceded, now is the time to intercede. If you've never gone into your prayer closet, if you've never been a watchman on the wall, now is the time. Because there's too many, too many saints that have become comfortable. And we've put down our sword. We've put down the word of God we become relaxed. And now we just go on with the flow. What happens if churches are closed for another year? Where do you think your spiritual walk will be? Based on where you are right now in your spiritual walk, where will you be 12 months from now? See, if, you, if you're praying, if you're reading, if you're studying, if you're meditating, if, you, if you're still worshiping, you'll be all right. But what about those that have become relaxed? Well, 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 Pastor, if I have to go that long, I'll start back reading. It may be too late. You may be overtaken by a fault by then. But it's my sincere prayer that, that as you hear my voice today, you will harden not your heart 
and you will adhere to the alarm that I am sounding. Get yourself back in that place with God. If you got to turn your car into your, your, your sanctuary, if you got to turn your closet into your prayer place, whatever you have to do, get back in that place with God because there's coming a day that there's going to be a scarcity of his word in this land. Make sure you have it. Make sure you're ready. If not, the real you is going to take over. Let's just pray this morning. Father God, we honor you and we adore you. We magnify your holy name. I pray that you have given an ear to hear. I pray that you, you have enlightened the body of Christ's ear to hear the message that I've given, Father. I've become alarmed. I've become concerned with what's going on in this world. And I pray that the body of believers, I pray that the body of Christ is, is, is yet on the wall watching. Because the enemy is plotting an attack like never before. You remember the church is still under persecution. It hasn't stopped. And we've got to be ready for the second wave of his attack. And Father, I thank you that you have strengthened some of us. You've girded up our loins to be ready to, to, to fight against the enemy. But for our brothers and sisters that may have fallen, that may have been overtaken in a fault, for those that have gotten weak and those have gotten relaxed, Father God, I, I, I set forth a charge unto them right now, Father, and I ask that you will ignite, ignite their spirit so that they will be back on the wall and, and ready for whatever comes our way, Father God. Father, I understand that many are called and few are chosen. We need every man on the front line right now, Father. He's seeking who he may devour. He's, he, he's, he's going to and fro like a, a roaring lion and every man needs to be on deck. But Father, what I love about you is that you won't let us go undone. You will not allow the body of Christ to be left ignorant to the enemy's devices. And I thank you for sounding the alarm this morning. Thank you, Father God, for waking us up, letting us know that there's a second wave coming, not just with COVID-19, but with the enemy. He's plotting his attack. Choose who, choose who this day ye will serve. Father, I ask that you will cover the body of believers. Put a hedge of protection around and about them. Keep their minds stayed on you. Keep them in perfect peace. And Father, we'll give you the glory and the honor. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, people of God.